to Worship Uncoiled Online Round 3. We are super excited that you decided to join us tonight. We are officially in lockdown mode. So rather than me filming this video at church, I get to film it at my home so you get a little peek into what it's like in the Mustin house. Hey, we start off every week with a little thing that we like to call the draw. For those of you that don't know, the draw is a drawing that we do every single week for a $10 gift card. Anybody that signs in gets to put their name in the bucket for the draw. The way you sign in this week is to simply comment on Facebook or YouTube in the comment sections that you're here, or send me an email and let me know you're watching, and I will put all those names in a hat, and at 8 o'clock, when Worship on Quilt is supposed to be over, I will do the draw. I don't have my cards with me because they're at church, but a card is coming. We have Amazon, we have iTunes, we have Chick-fil-A, and we have Steak and Shake. So those are your options tonight. If you are the winner, you will get to choose from one of those four options. Every week we also do a thing called the challenge. It's the crazy game that I usually come up with. Tonight for the challenge, I need to go down to my basement and get the supplies that I need. So hold on, I'll be right back. I've got the supplies that I need. I needed a quarter. So, whew, those stairs, I tell you what. So if you have a quarter, go grab a quarter and I will show you what we're doing for the challenge tonight. So you've got your quarter. Here's what you're gonna do. When I was a kid, I used to love to do this. You take the quarter, you stand it up like so, and you flip it so it flips, hopefully not falling off the counter, and then you try to stop it on end. I know, super impressive, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna set a three minute timer, and you, as many times as you can, you're gonna flip that quarter, and you're gonna try to get it to stop on end. If it falls, that's okay, just pick it up and flip it again. Every time you get it to stop on end, you just count it. So that's one, right? And then you do it again, and that's two. And you just keep going until the timer runs out. And whoever can do this the most times over the course of three minutes will get to pick a prize from our prize table. So pause this video, go grab a quarter, and grab a flat surface, and get ready to stand that quarter on end. When you start the video, the countdown will start back up, and when you hear the music, you can start flipping those quarters.
guys, so when I was in high school, I learned how to play the guitar. I was not very good at it, and I very quickly learned that I cannot sing very well at all. But the cool thing about worship is this. We're going to post some links. I'm obviously not going to leave worship because some of you have had the experience of standing next to me while I sing. We're going to post some links. But the cool thing about this is, is that even though I can't sing, I still sing loud. Because God's word says that he loves a joyful voice. And so I... I'm honestly, on these Sunday nights, I'm missing our band um, because when when they sing and, and I'm able to sing with them, man, they just do an awesome job. And I hope that you feel that on Sunday nights. And I hope that you get a, a small taste as you listen to these links. Maybe you want to sing along. I know it's awkward, but God loves a joyful voice. He loves it when we sing to him, when we praise him. And so... We're going to post some links to some songs for you to listen to and for you to sing along with. And maybe you want to, to dance or do whatever. I know my kids tend to do that sometimes. Um, we would love to have you just worship God however you feel led. So listen to these few songs and uh, hopefully you feel God in the midst of these. So Easter is two weeks away. Normally we'd be getting prepared for the big Easter church service in our church buildings. And normally families at this time would be preparing for the big Easter dinner and the big Easter celebrations and communities would be getting ready for the huge Easter egg hunt at the local park. Normally this would be a time where we are excited to gather together with other people, normally. But this Easter looks to be anything but normal. Instead, this Easter, churches are looking for a way to engage their congregation online in a meaningful way. This Easter, families, instead of gathering together as an extended family, are gathering with just their immediate families to celebrate Easter. This Easter, Local parks will be bare and no children will be hunting eggs. This Easter is going to be an Easter in quarantine. You know, this time of quarantine has made many of us aware of the limitations we face in this life. Like, for example, toilet paper. We're at the mercy of the store's ability to supply us with toilet paper and at the mercy of the limitations of how quickly that toilet paper gets bought. Or for example, height. I told you guys last week that I was short as a kid. And no matter how much I wanted to be tall enough to at least not get my shot blocked on the basketball court, I was at the limitations of how much growth hormone my pituitary gland produced. Or for example, school. Many of you are so excited to get back to school and back to a normal routine, but you're faced with the limitations of what the governor and what the school administration decides. This Easter, an Easter in quarantine, is most likely going to be an Easter of limitations. And limitations are frustrating. We get frustrated by the limitation of internet speed, we get frustrated by a limitation of curfew. We get frustrated by limitations of the rules that are set before us. And at a time when quarantine is causing us to be more limited, our limitations in our life become more glaring and obvious. We're limited by time and money. We're limited by our exhaustion. We're limited by the rules set before us by parents and leaders. And this Easter looks to be an Easter of limitations. But Easter's coming. And this may not be the most normal Easter we have ever experienced. It may be an Easter in quarantine. But at the same time, this not so normal Easter may just be a little bit more normal than we realize. Here's why I say that. 
Because just as we right now are experiencing a time of quarantine, Jesus was born into quarantine. I love the way that John starts his gospel. He starts it very simply in John chapter 1, starting in verse 1, it says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. John starts his gospel not talking about Jesus as he came to earth. John starts his gospel talking about Jesus before he came to earth. And so John is talking about how before Jesus came to earth, he was God and he was with God. And he was this powerful being that created everything. And then you jump down to verse 14. And it says this. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. In one moment, Jesus went into quarantine. In one moment, the one who was limitless had an endless amount of limits placed upon Him. In one moment, the one who was all-powerful became not powerful enough to even care for Himself. You see, in this time of quarantine, in this time where we are social distancing, where we are limited to the amount of relationships that we can have and the amount of people that we can see, we get to, in a small way, experience what Jesus experienced when he left heaven and came to earth. Over the years, I've had quite a few Easter celebrations. I've had more Easter egg hunts than I can remember. Times where, as a child, I would run and hunt the colorful eggs and then eat those hard-boiled eggs, even though they'd been sitting out all day. And as a teenager, when I would sprint to try to be the one that finds the most eggs, yes, I hunted Easter eggs as a teenager. I've had Easter celebrations where we got kites for Easter and I've flown the kites on windy Easter days so high that I thought they might touch the clouds. I've had Easter celebrations where Kirsten and I, before we had kids, had an Easter egg hunt for our dogs. And yes, our little Shih Tzu named Moose was able to find those plastic eggs and get them open and get the treats out without breaking the egg. I've experienced Easter church services that were a meaning and meaningful and powerful reminder that Jesus has risen from the dead. Normally, Easter celebrations involve other people. Church services are full of people. Groups of kids swarm brightly colored eggs and families get together to celebrate. Easter is not normally spent in quarantine. But as I think back over the story of Jesus, the complete Easter story, the recurring theme that continues to run through that story is this idea of quarantine. Jesus left the power of heaven to come to earth to be born into quarantine, to have a set of limitations placed upon him. Throughout his ministry, Jesus was seen by the religious elite as the outcast. He was limited in the way that he could interact with them. He was placed in quarantine. Often Jesus would go to a spot by himself and quarantine himself to be alone with his father. Near the end of his life, the 12 men that followed him deserted him, leaving him in quarantine at the mercies of his accusers. The crowds that adored Jesus abandoned him, leaving him alone and in quarantine as they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Jesus spent three days in quarantine in the grave before defeating death and rising from the dead. You see, as we spend this Easter in quarantine, we are in good company. As we spend this Easter in quarantine, this Easter that is not necessarily normal, we get a chance to, in a very real sense, experience Jesus. We get to experience a Jesus that regularly experienced times of quarantine. Now I know what you're thinking. 
That's a great thought process, CJ, but what does that have to do with me? Let me start here. Yes, Jesus left the glory of heaven to come to earth, having a set of limitations placed on him, what I'm calling quarantine. And yes, Jesus was often rejected by the people of this earth and left in quarantine. But although Jesus was left alone or had limitations placed on him, he was never really alone. You see, Jesus was able to handle the limitations and handle the quarantine so well because he knew that he had a heavenly father that was walking beside him and with him the entire way. He knew that no matter what he faced, he was never going to be left by God. And as we face this Easter in quarantine, as we face this Easter more alone than we have been in previous Easter's, we can know that we are really not alone. We're in the midst of a quarantine right now because of this coronavirus and it's changing the way that we interact with people. School is canceled and along with that all the social interactions that happen on a daily basis. Extracurriculars are canceled. Life seems to be slowing down as we spend more and more time alone. And maybe right now this is causing you to feel alone. I want to let you know that you are not alone. Maybe right now you're facing your own time of personal quarantine. Maybe sickness or death of a loved one or biting comments from other people are just causing you to feel very alone. I want you to know that you are not alone. You see, the story of Easter is about Jesus rising from the dead. But there is this very real theme that flows through Jesus' entire story that in the midst of quarantine, in the midst of the times when we feel alone, we are not alone. And you are not alone. As this Easter approaches and we spend Easter in quarantine, as it looks like many churches are going to go to online services and as it looks like family celebrations will not necessarily be able to meet and as it looks like we're going to have to change the way that we do things this Easter. As you experience those changes, let it be a solid reminder that we are not alone. That in the midst of quarantine, we have a God that is with us, that loves us and cares for us. You know, each week I give a practical challenge and I, I realize for some of you this, this really hits home. You're feeling alone right now. And for some of you, this doesn't necessarily quite hit home, but at some point you may feel alone. And so this is an important practical challenge, whether this addresses you right now or not. You know, a lot of times when we feel alone, we just need reminders that we're not, that we're not alone. And so I, I simply want you, either as an individual or as a family, to sit down and write a note that simply says, you are not alone. You are not alone. You are loved. And then I just want you to post that as a reminder to yourself or to your entire family that in the midst of quarantine, in the midst of difficult times, you are not alone alone. So I want to try to do something. So I have been doing the Worship Uncoiled News for the last couple of weeks and uh, it's lame. So <laughs> I think that we should do a Zoom version of the Worship Uncoiled News. What do you guys think? Are you oh. down for that? <laughs> Maybe. Sure, why not? Totally fail. Uh, <laughs> this is my first time ever on Zoom, but I think it would be awesome to do the Worship on Coiled News on Zoom. What do you guys think? Good with it? Yeah, I'm good with it. Yeah. All right, all right. So here's here's we what we're going to do. Hi, I'm Jacob. Hi, I'm Jocelyn. Hi, I'm Jackson. I'm Shane. I'm Logan. I'm Gavin. I'm Devon. I'm Lindsay. What's up, guys? I'm Giovanna. I'm Kirsten. And I'm CJ. One, two, three.
And, and this, this is worship of oil. oil. <laughs> that is awesome. We are all hanging out on Zoom. Be sure to join us next Friday at 2 o'clock. Thanks for coming to WhatsApp and Coil Online. Join us again at 6 o'clock on Facebook and YouTube. All events for April have been canceled, but we are still getting together online, so don't miss out. Right now, our CIY trips this summer are still on as planned. Sign up by emailing CJ. Uh, we are hoping to get back together this summer, so keep an eye out for all the fun things we have going. Thanks for joining tonight. Make sure to join next week at 6 for Worship Uncoiled Online and Friday at 2 for our Zoom meeting.